Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Game Maker tutorial. This is part 19 to my RPG Basics series. Yeah, it's not dead, I'm still doing it. I have been sick the last couple of weeks, and so that's why I haven't had a video out. My voice has been a little bit shaky, it makes it hard to record. Uh, but I'm back now, I'm doing better, seem to be on the tail end of that cold. So let's jump right in and get started. Um, I do want to mention that my Game Maker course is on sale for $25 right now uh, from the $59 full price, I think. So if you want to check that out, there'll be a link in this video. Um, but let's get started. So what are we going to do in this video? Well, uh, I've had a lot of people that have been struggling with getting transitions between rooms. So you have one room, your character goes through a door or some sort of object to go to the next room. And when the character appears in the next room, the physics fixed rotation is no longer working for the character or they can't get that to work. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing transitions and uh, I guess kind of like moving between different rooms inside of the game. So the first thing we need to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to duplicate this sprite that's called Sprite Player. Duplicate. We're going to name this Sprite Door. And I'm just going to make it brown. Um, so go in between red and yellow, drop down on your saturation levels, and then go darker. That's how you can get a brown color. There we go. We've got a nice brown for our door. We're going to create a door object. So create a new object. We're going to call this object door. And assign sprite door to it. We're going to make it a physics object. So it uses physics, but it's going to be a sensor. We're not actually going to collide with this object. It'll just be a sensor object. And I'll make its density zero. Now inside of the create event for this door, it needs to have um, some variables that are going to store where we're going to send the player when he goes to the next room. So we need a, an X variable for that, a room variable, so we know what room to send him to, and a Y variable. So we're going to call this initialize the door, and we're going to say new X equals zero, new Y equals zero, new room equals no one. Okay. Now these are all zeros and no one because we're going to actually initialize these in what's called the creation code for the object. So we can give specific instances their own creation code. I'll show you how that works. So press the green check mark here and press OK. So our door object is ready, but our player object is not ready yet. So come into the player, add an event, add a collision with the door. Inside of here, we're going to go to the next room if it exists. So go through the door, through the door. So if room exists, other dot new room. So we're checking to see if the, if the door that we're trying to go through actually has a room to go to. If it does, if the room exists, other dot new room exists, then we're going to say x equals other dot new x and y equals other dot new y. Oh yeah, we need to go to the next room as well. Room go to other dot new room. And I'm placing that before the x and y movement. Because we want to go to the new room and then move to the correct location. That's how we're going to handle this. Okay. So our player is looking pretty good, but our player object also needs to be what's called persistent. This means that the player object will stay the same no matter what room the player object is in. Uh, it won't create a new player object for the new room. We can use the same player object. So we'll use persistent. That way our player object will be consistent throughout all the rooms. Now what we need to do is we need to go to our room down here and I'm actually going to duplicate this room duplicate 
and settings. The next one's going to be called room 2. Now this room has a player object in it, but it doesn't need to have that player object in it because our player object will be persistent. So the player object that we create in the first room should carry into this one. So we can delete that. I just held control and right clicked on it to delete it. And I think our stats are persistent too. Yeah, the stats are persistent as well. So we're going to right click and delete the stats object because the one we create in this room will carry over into the second room. So in the second room, I'm going to delete the walls just so that I know this is the second room. I don't get the, them confused. I'm also going to delete a few of the enemies that are here close to the entrance. Okay. Now I'm going to go, uh, yeah, there we go. Now I'm going to go into, let me save this, into the first room, and we're going to create a door. So come down here on this corner, go to Objects, scale this back, and I'm going to create a door right here. I'm going to make it two squares wide, and there is our door, okay? So that looks pretty good, and we want a connecting door inside of our room too, and I'm going to put it right up here. So let's go to Objects, click on this object, drag this back drag this over to that should actually overlap there if you don't have these walls overlapping the player will be able to walk through them and we'll create a door here okay so we've got two doors now how do we tell game maker that these two doors are connected right well the way that we're gonna do it is we're just gonna use the uh, creation code for these two door instances. So here's the one in the first room. Where do we want this door to send the player? Well, we want to send the player to room two, obviously, and we want to send the player to about this position in the room right here. Now this position in the room is, um, it, it technically, it can be about whatever you want it, but what I've found works really good is an X position of 64 and a Y position of 32 or 36. So that puts the player X position around here and a Y position somewhere about here. So it'll look like the player came through that door. We'll place them right here. So we're going to come into this door and we're going to right click on it and go to creation code. Then we're going to say new new room equals room two right because that's the room we want to go to this one right here the x position new x equals 64 okay and new y equals 36 because those are the values that i have found seem to work pretty good 36 if i can get it right okay let's press the green check mark looks good now let's come into this one right here we need to tell it how to get back to this position so i'm going to right click on this and go to the creation code we're going to do the same thing except with different values new room equals room one new x equals room width right all the way over to the end here minus 64 that seems to be pretty good. It'll put us right about here. And the room or the new Y is going to be room height minus 52. These are just values that I found work good. Okay. So it comes all the way down to the bottom and then subtract 52. It's going to put the player about here. It's important that you don't put the player on the door though. If you put the player on the door right here, then he'll teleport back and forth between the two doors instantly forever you'll create a loop so you want to be really careful about these values if you're not careful you could end up with a loop like that and if you if you run into a glitch where when your player goes through a door he just pops he just appears basically in the same room again in front of the door then that you're probably too close but if you use these values and put your doors in the exact same places that I have, you won't have this issue. Okay, so we've got our doors set up. Let's save and run the game. Now what you're going to notice is um, image scale for physics object using circle collision should not vary across axis. Abort. So what happened was um, 
our door object right here is using a circle collision instead of a box collision. We want to change it to a box collision. Now let's modify the collision mask and make sure that this lines up. That's why we got that glitch, that error message. Okay, that looks good though. So just go into your door object, go to modify collision shape, make sure it's set to a box, and then align that collision so we can get the correct collisions this time. And not weird, weird, weird errors. Okay, so come down here, we're running along, and we go through this door, boom, we appear in this room. That looks good, we come along, boom, back up in this room. But our physics rotation isn't working anymore and our player freaks out. Now, a lot of you have uh, either used my door tutorial system or Ryan's Zelda-like room transitions um, and run into this problem. Now, the issue is that even though the player object is marked persistent, apparently the physics fixture that's attached to the player object doesn't these properties aren't persistent so when we set the fixed rotation it doesn't actually it's not actually persistent between rooms we go to a new room and all of a sudden we lose that that we set now the easy fix for that is just to add an event add and go into other events and go to room start and set the fixed rotation physics fix rotation equals true. If you do that inside of the room start event, then when you move between the rooms like we were doing, um, and come back, you'll still have the physics fix rotation. So you can come through and take damage from... Well, apparently that didn't work. What did I do wrong? Did I do room start? I did game start. That was silly. Okay, change event, other, room start. Okay, <laughs> game start is not going to work. It's going to do the same thing as a create event, basically. It's not exactly the same. Okay, now let's try this again. Okay, Okay, there we go. We've got our fixed rotation now. It's working. I can go between these two rooms. Now, it looks a little weird that the view pops around, so if you want to fix that as well, you can come into the view object, and in the create event for our view object, just make sure to move the view over to the player. So, move to player. If instance exists, object player. x equals object player dot x. y equals object player dot y. Okay. Now, when we move between the views or between the rooms, our view should stay the same. I'm going to take damage here and make sure that our stats are consistent. Oh, yeah. So we come into the next room and our stats are working. Huh. <laughs> you can dash through the doors. It actually it actually dashes still. That's cool. Didn't realize that. So everything seems to be working. That's how you can set it up to where you don't lose your physics fixed rotation. Just put it in the start event. And that was a weird glitch that we'll have to look into here in the next video, I guess. Huh. It was wigging out. The little slime was switching back and forth. So I'll have to look into that. As you start to get bigger and bigger projects like this, it's just normal that you're going to get glitches. And that's okay. It's just part of the game creation process is running into bugs and then working them out. Um, so it'll be good practice for us to do that. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can email me. But if this video was helpful to you, if you learned something in this video, be sure and like it, share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter. That always helps me. And I will talk to you guys later.